Hello all. How are you doing? I mean, first things first, I'm really happy to uh, to see you all again in the next week. Uh, I'm all excited was first being to check whether you are able to hear uh, my voice. So you can just tell me uh, I can hear you. Okay, in the comment section so that uh, uh, we'll see whether you are able to hear it. I'll wait for your comments till I proceed further. So first we'll check whether the audio is working fine. Uh, so hope you're able to hear my voice clearly so that I can, uh, I can able to start. Yes, we got uh, from one from Facebook saying that we can hear you. Awesome, great. Thank you, thank you all. And before I introduce uh, to the speaker and, and have him on board, uh, let us let us start with uh, uh, with your comments okay so first of all what is the first thing that comes to your mind when you hear the word creativity first thing when i say the word creativity what comes to your mind you just quickly go on to your comment section if you are in youtube or facebook just type it whatever that comes to your mind when you hear the word creativity So this session is going to be even more interactive. We, we tried to be more engaging than last week. So in between, there'll be certain questions that will pop up, uh, uh, pop up in the chat. So you need to reply to that. So let's, let's see uh, if we could uh, make it more engaging and interesting for both of us. Even though I'm going to have a conversation with the speaker, you are essentially part of it as well. So I'm your representative uh, speaking with a uh, with a guest you also have a very important role uh, in this so it's almost uh, 458 2 minutes to go so i'll 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 start very soon uh, yeah keep on keep on going yeah somebody said uh, making us engage to the environment uh, imagination art uh, Keep going, keep typing, being different, art and craft. Uh, maybe I can I can show that on the screen as well. Okay. Thank you, thank you, keep going. Okay, what is the one thing that comes to your mind when you hear the word? Creativity, because the topic for today is creativity, which we feel as as very important uh, superpower. We would like to call it as superpower, not just life skill, because that is what uh, they are. Okay, so let me quickly introduce why we are doing this. Uh, this is Harish Srinivasan. I'm one of the co-founder of Infinite Engineers and chief curator at Ology Host. So we started this whole program called Hands On Science Tournament in terms of triggering those 21st century skills or the superpowers uh, to the children. So these superpowers includes creativity, curiosity, critical thinking, collaboration, and, and many more. So we thought of uh, uh, triggering these skills to the young children because that's, that's very important in today's world. Uh, we understand that we focus more on the academics, but when we come to uh, facing career or, or doing something different, that plays a very important role. So we thought of like taking one skill per week, I mean, one superpower per week and exploring that in detail with an expert and through, a, uh, through our videos and everything. So even our whole tournament is focused on, on developing these skills. And uh, uh, without, without further uh, delay, I would like to like start briefing. Just give me a few seconds till I set up a thing. Okay, so when I was uh, looking for the speaker for this particular episode, I, I was very fortunate enough to have this person called uh, Raghavan Manian. So I would like to call him a polymath. Polymath is a person who is, uh, have knowledge in different fields, more than two or more fields. As you could have seen in the, in the poster that we have revealed uh, before, uh, Raghavan Manian is a musician. He's an educator. He's a technologist 
so he is there in in three different uh, areas and that, that's the most wonderful thing about uh, raghavan uh, manian uh, he is uh, the disciple of legendary musician balamulik krishna so i'm i'm uh, when i've read him through the articles he could play more than 10 instruments and he is also an educator and uh, uh, technologist as well so i'm i'm really happy i'm i'm really excited to uh, to invite uh, uh, raghavan manian here uh, raghavan can you hear me i can hear you very well what about you yeah perfect super super welcome to the next episode where we are going to dive deeper to creativity so your initial thoughts <laughs> <laughs> well uh, i think you you are absolutely right creativity is a super power yeah and uh, in the uh, in the future that becomes us um, in the near term as well as to the end of uh, uh, time as we can see it creativity mm-hmm. may be the single most important superpower that you need mm. and uh, <laughs> of course it's it's also the topic for the day so it might sound like yeah. inflating it but let's look <laughs> at it objectively right um what do we do uh, when the jobs and the chores and the tasks that we do today and life yeah. itself as we know it changes radically what mm. what if what do we say if um in 10 years time actually it's going to be yeah. sooner maybe but in 10 years yeah. time most of what we do today on a day to day basis will be automated mm. right so sure. so mm. um we are at a very interesting juncture in technology we are facing mm. a major revolution uh probably you know when you look at technology and revolutions over time the first mm-hmm. revolution that you can think of is the industrial revolution right yeah the wheel was invented and then 2000 years passed and uh, during those times innovation was um, organic and uh, evolutionary mm. but something happened during the inter- industrial revolution which was that's yeah. why it's called a revolution it was a revolutionary it was almost mm. like turning things around unrecognizably so it was life sure. before the industrial and after the industrial revolution so the Great. whole way in which we lived and we thought and we mm-hmm. conducted business and we approached uh, um art even everything changed uh, during those yeah. brief you know decades decades true so we are talking about 10 20 30 years of change yeah what was the next revolution you can think of the information revolution so this is some it is a revolution that you and i have had uh been part mm. of in a way we have been fortunate to witness this happen before our very yeah. eyes you know something that started maybe in the 70s and slowly again in a matter of yeah. a fewer decades compared to industrial revolution but still in a matter of a few decades our yeah. lives have been taken over almost by our True. devices our gadgets you know uh, whether it's a pc like the one that i'm sitting opposite to whether it's a smartphone that looks like mm-hmm. everybody in the planet has one um <laughs> or any number of augmentations it's your smart watch uh, what you use mm-hmm. to track your uh, activities uh, and mm-hmm. so on and so forth there is no dearth of devices and very soon we'll have these uh, sort of smart TVs smart fridges they're all coming into the market you know smart yeah. lighting um and so these are all extensions of uh information technology and the revolution is called information revolution now what is the next one right yeah <laughs> you tell me harish uh so the next is i mean i just would like to lead to this conversation but before that to to set up a context about you because i i gave you an introduction because i am also curious like the audience it's as challenging because i know like i love many things but but uh, but i i cannot able to do it but but i uh, it's so fascinating to see you that i could see a musician in you i could see a educator in you we just want to get a context of how it all happened uh, from your uh, background how it all happened and your passion areas at the same time i'd also like to uh, ask the audience to type in their passionate areas they could be doing some other work but i'm only focusing on their passionate area something that they love doing yeah. you could also type it in the comment section but over to you raghavan like how it all started well um 
I suppose at the very core of it is curiosity. So, okay. you know, um, that is one, there are a couple of things that always are uh, talked about when we discuss how does someone become somebody? Um, mm. How did this, uh, this great person, where did uh, a great musician like Ilai Raja come from? Or mm. where did a great uh, engineer like Thomas Edison come from? Right? Okay. We trace their roots and, and it does not have to be somebody great. Where did Harish come from? Where did Raghavan come from? Mm. We mm. all are a product of two things, nature and nurture. Right? So uh, in your summary, uh, you had rightly focused on the value of nurture. Mm. Because nurture is something that we can control. We can provide, True. we can inculcate, we can spread, we can make institutions of, we can get government uh, support, mm. we can get, uh, um, you know, uh, plenty of uh, 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 people supporting us in many various ways. Uh, but where, it, where these things also have a basic uh, seed, right, is the mm. environment mm. in which you grow up. So, True. you know, I, I believe uh, that I grew up in an environment which encouraged me to not only uh, do the usual things that kids growing up in the 80s do, okay. just to hit the books and score well and maybe play an occasional game of cricket. Mm -hmm. but also, also explore uh, the world of art. So in my case, mm -hmm. it was music. And because my parents were musically interested, they are not musicians, but they loved okay. the idea. And, uh, and they had the foresight to uh, recognize that I had a little bit of a musical talent, right? Okay. This is the nature part. Uh, hmm. What we call as Pulayar Suri in Tamil, the, the very start. Starting, uh, point. Know, starting yeah. point. But for, for a mere alphabet to become a word and then a sentence and a paragraph and a whole story, hmm. um, I think it's, it's a combination of b being at the right place at the right time True. and showing intent. So these are the two things I would say. There is a there is a fortune element, a luck element, mm -hmm. uh, which has been there. And I think when I got opportunities, I took them. And, okay. And uh, maybe also because I was very very attracted to music since I was a very young person, uh, mm -hmm. and the attraction became with time became obsession, and the okay. obsession became passion. <laughs> and so stage by stage you know uh, and then uh, by again like the the right kind of environment and the right turn of yeah. events i could get good uh, people to guide me and one of whom is uh, the legendary like you said padma vibhushan yeah. krishna i have Wonderful. had the fortune of people people like him directly influencing my life so i would avoid um, as much to luck as to intent okay great that that's wonderful to hear that's a great start while we are speaking we could also hear one of the i think a student replied uh, she passionate area is dancing uh, and somebody said having an adventure so uh, it's interesting to uh, to uh, see people who are like uh, i mean conveying with so much happiness when we convey it itself we will we'll get a lot of happiness which i say i love to sing i love to dance which may not be a profession in itself, but still we had that happiness. So I would like to jump to the next question of what does creativity means to you? Because there are a lot of definitions when you see the uh, internet, when you type what is creativity, a lot of things comes uh, on the opening pages. So in your life, what does creativity means to you and, and how important is it? Um, yeah, so the definition of creativity, like you said, um, everybody who is somebody has defined creativity. Right. Yeah. Um, we also saw from uh, sampling of your uh, our viewers that people mm. think of creativity, they think of the arts. Yeah. Uh, I think in in general, the way I look at creativity is uh, a sort of an open mind to solve mm. problems. So in, okay. in general, in the most general sense, creativity is having access to the right tools at the right time in order to solve problems, mm. right? In fact, yeah. uh, but then solving a problem assumes that you know what the problem is. So I would say, in general, identifying problems is also mm. a very creative process. So okay. even though there is 
when we talk about problems and solving, it sounds a lot like engineering. So what problem yeah. is a musician solving? <laughs> like, uh, just killing time or uh, is there anything more to it? In fact, the approach to engineer, engineering and the approach to music, uh, mm. there are parallels. You can't say they are the same or okay. there won't be two disciplines. Of course, they are okay. not the same. But the, uh -huh. at, at a level of abstraction, you can definitely basically boil it down to a few things. And those few things are, you know, within the superpower of creativity, I would call them superpowers within creativity. Right. Wonderful. Um, so I would say, yeah, it's a, it's a meta power. It's a, it's, it's, uh, <laughs> it's not just one thing. Yeah. It's, yes. I mean, uh, you, if you look at it that way, it is what it is, right? If yeah. you think of creativity as a generic tool set, with mm. which you can uh, both, you know, pick on a log and fry an egg, right? Okay. Uh, then we have something interesting here. We have a tool that, that mm. fits in many situations. And that is the level at which we want to operate as educators, okay. uh, as scientists, as engineers, and even mm -hmm. as musicians. Um, so we, let's, let's try and uh, maybe price through some of those varieties of superpowers which are sure. still sitting inside the creativity <laughs> sure sure raghavan and and my next i mean uh, something that that i uh, uh, i regret in my life something that i feel should not have happened is that uh, my last drawing period in my school was in grade 8 and my last music class in my school was in uh, so after that i didn't have as a period even, even though i tried to learn go outside and do it but still the academic pressure actually like kept me going with that mm -hmm. so how much do you feel is every person should have a, an expression medium it could be song music it could be anything or just doodling but how f important do you feel that medium of expression is important yeah. and i would also ask audience to type in their preferred medium of expression something that they are doing currently audience can type it uh -huh. and yeah yeah, uh, I think it's this is a meaning of life question. You know, uh, when people ask yeah. you what is the meaning of life, uh, you can't mm. say forty-two. No, <laughs> it's not. Even though it's a good joke, uh, the meaning of life is to engage in in something very deeply and very personally, enjoy it thoroughly, mm. and leave something for others. Uh, spread the happiness, right? Spread the joy. Uh, yeah. I would think that is at the very core of the meaning of life, right? Mm -hmm. So, uh, if you think about, um, so let's see, I am losing the train of thought. So you, you wanted to know how, um, yeah, how important it is to yeah, why, choose why our own. Why is it yeah. that people stop art in exactly. school, right? This is, exactly. Um, yeah, I mean, so sitting here in your adult life, right, Harish, mm -hmm. you have this regret. So what will you do about it? You'll go about trying to become an artist or, or, or learn some art or learn some music or listen yeah. to mu some music. Had you have uh, uh, some more training in that art, mm -hmm. wouldn't your life be more fun and more significant and more enriched, right? Is yeah. the question you're asking, this is the real question you're asking. Right? Yes. So this is actually such a circular problem that we face, right? Mm -hmm. uh, at some point, arbitrarily, we draw a line in the sand and we say, beyond this, the yeah. creative arts, by the way, engineering is a creative art too. You know, we should... Is it? Is it? <laughs> Even I'm an engineer. <laughs> absolutely, yes. Absolutely. There is not a single engineer that I've encountered who's worth the salt, who has not been creative. Uh, okay. But we'll come to that later. Sure. Uh, speaking of art... Art is a very special form of creativity, right? Uh, mm. Artists are, uh, you know, in a, in a sort of a spiritual way of uh, saying it, close to God. Uh, mm. That's what, you know, when you think of a poet, we think of inspiration, divine inspiration. When we think yeah. of a musician, we think, um, you know, I can feel the divinity. You don't usually mm -hmm. go into uh, a, a, a store full of engineering parts and see divinity in it. Although okay. that is just a delusion in the mind. We should be able to see it. Uh, mm -hmm. But uh, uh, art is immediately appealing, immediately gratifying. You know, mm. uh, there, is some, there is a very quick uh, closure of the feedback, 
feedback loop the positive mm-hmm. reinforcement in art is tremendous right that's why yeah. at some point anybody and everybody turns to art for mm. sakka for uh, atma tripti like we say for shanti yeah. for pre peace and so uh, we are actually shooting ourselves in the feet when we mm. do not do this when when we cannot support art as a continual engagement in schools when we suddenly True. decide that arbitrarily uh, the so called study of sciences is superior Uh, mm-hmm. uh, and and when you do that it is almost like saying from tomorrow just look through the world with your left eye you don't need your right eye okay so what will you lose in it you may argue hey i can see just as well but you mm-hmm. lose the perception of depth when you lose one eye that is exactly what happens when you cut True. out art in the traditional sense you leave mm-hmm. out a big part of this creative um, tool set that you want to inculcate you are mm-hmm. you're suddenly saying my toolkit oh i'll throw the spanner out and uh, with okay. whatever i have i'll fix my automotive it will not be possible mm-hmm. you will find so many points where you are stuck and the okay. reason you are stuck is because you did not train your brain was not equipped enough to think outside of the so called box mm. that is a big problem so you know uh, if we are going to treat uh, art as you know at least something that continues through your lives in the school okay. system and into the college system into the uh, mm. advanced degrees that is the right way to do it i mean anything else anything short of that is sad sad yeah <laughs> agreed and while we are conversing i mean like many people have have uh, put up something that uh, love art and somebody said playing guitar uh drawing a scenery uh, and i somebody said i do love art so we I, i there is no exception like everybody loves art in any form or the other but the thing is that i just would like to lead to the next question where seeing that i mean I, we could see wonderful children and even adults who are practicing art uh, in their time zones but when we are in the school there are a lot of est- restrictions in terms of focusing more on marks but there could be few set of people would be an inspiration according to you in terms of motivating you there are some characteristics that could have inspired you maybe in, within your family friends or teachers what are those characteristics that kept your creativity going and which you feel the current generation parents or educators should have uh-huh. or something that they could have it yeah. um uh yeah very simply put um if you take a pie chart with 24 hours in it this is a okay. well known approach right and you turn uh, you take stuff out for sleep and the daily routine mm-hmm. you'll be left with a say about 12 hours for mm-hmm. everything else and those 12 hours <clears throat> what do you think is the most optimal way of spending those 12 hours that keeps you uh your mind your body and your soul fresh during those 12 hours right um <clears throat> what we have figured out and some of the schools that i've have seen i work with um seem to have discovered this maybe through mm. research uh, with best practices okay that simply doing those 8 or so many hours of um so called studying Mm. uh it's not going to lead to the same amount of um, success even if you define academic success narrowly as uh, okay. better test grades as combining it with other things um uh, an outdoor activity mm. sport music okay. um inquiry right so there are actually uh, syllabuses out there and uh, mm. you know um which urge you to incorporate for example making right mm. you know uh, how important making is as a skill yes even for adults not only because making puts us in touch with our innermost urges to create correct right so uh, what about making how much of our study is simply uh, mm. wrote or simply solving problems uh, versus how much of those same 
problem solving skills are going to be enhanced when you mm. accompany it with something related that involves mm. making or it involves singing or involves uh. jumping right okay and this is also something people have discovered as multiple intelligence right so mm. they say that people are endowed with uh, different uh, dimensions of intelligence right true harish you may be a better swimmer than me i may be a better mm. ping pong player so within sport there are multiple things yeah. that you may be a better racquetball player uh, i mean and i may be a better musician but you may be right mm. so uh, Got you, it. you know so some some children for example cannot sit still for more than 10 minutes mm. right and system uh, what a system make you do uh, it will force you to sit in one place for 45 minutes and yeah. and when it when it does that and i don't really i am not proposing a solution here i'm just stating the problem sure uh, the problem with this approach is that when you measure every child by the same yardstick mm. you are fundamentally not respecting an intelligence that the child has in something else which will uh, basically enhance his or her creativity Uh, because at mm. the end of the day we have to agree that creativity is the skill we are going for here and yes. given that and given given that creativity can solve problems for you mm. and uh, then what do you do to equip the children better so art is a way to express another intelligence sport is a mm. way to express yet another dimension of intelligence physics okay. is a way to express a third dimension right these are all different chemistry lab the good, yeah. good version not the cheat version <laughs> <laughs> the version where you are actually exploring reactions mm-hmm. and, and experimenting, experimenting it experimenting yeah. openly yeah. and uh, that also explores a different completely different kinesthetic right mm. making stuff pouring stuff um, you know it's a complete like cooking is a chemistry lab right yeah so cooking uh, gardening uh each one of these activities which are a far cry from what syllabus um, traditionally have recommended each mm-hmm. one of them is uh, uh allowing you to explore something within you which might be your calling which might be your best bet correct which might mm-hmm. be the best way in which you can give back uh where mm-hmm. you can yourself uh, giving back is one thing also actuating actualizing your potential so in many ways by not uh, uh uh by not having a sport curriculum or a, an art yeah. curriculum or a nature curriculum we are denying ourselves our humanity right oh that's that's very big thing but underneath that's that's a fundamental i mean it's, it's our fundamental right to to express and i think we should have the space in our day to day life and uh, 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 so that's that's most important point and uh, i guess like people are also like replying playing any sport drawing and uh, uh, do some creative activities love to play sports games there are so many things out there which people are typing it out yeah. and uh, that's wonderful and dragavan i mean before moving to the next question i've just marked in my schedule as musical performance because i guess one of the student already like he has replied since you're a musician you should play an instrument i mean that was came very long way like 10 minutes back i guess really? so Yeah, I can we do that now? I, I yeah, we can. Um, let me see if I'm equipped to do that in short notice. Sure, sure. <clears throat> Not a problem. We will, we will wait for that. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Um, yeah, uh, doing is uh, key, right? That's what. Uh, give yeah. me one second. I'm just going to get an get an instrument. Sure. Here. Not a problem. so we will wait for raghavan to get his uh, musical instrument because i didn't tell him uh, uh, i thought of like we will have it uh, as part of the plan as as part of surprise for him as well so uh, we will see what with what instrument and what he's going to play and after that like we'll take it forward till then for audience if you have any specific questions that you uh, have to ask raghavan in this conversation please go ahead and type the questions we'll note it down and whenever we get a chance we will we'll put up that question so please type your questions as well okay okay <laughs> yes <laughs> uh let's do uh a...
So I'll just check any other flute players in this audience. Yeah, you can go ahead. Yeah. It's clear. Wow, <laughs> amazing! It it gave us a whole new feel for this whole webinar. Uh, maybe maybe you could not see what people are typing, but there are so many comments out there. Like uh, they they they, it's like they're enjoying it. <laughs> it could be a student, it could be a parent. I think like uh, they are like enjoying your performance. So so thank you. It gave a whole new dimension to this. Thank so you. thank you audience for enjoying. And I just want to bring that point here to have, because that's the, the mood entirely changes. That's the power of art. I mean, like, yes. <laughs> and I just imagining during the classroom, if there is an opportunity, even in science, if there is an opportunity to dance or sing, I would have enjoyed. <laughs> okay. That's actually good. Right. Um, where, uh, so I am a guest faculty at, Indian Institute of Technology, Madras. The mm. engineering design department has a course there that they okay. invite me to give some lectures on. So the course is, uh, luckily for me, it is about the physics of music. Okay. <laughs> I say luckily because then I get to enjoy both my uh, math side as well as my music side at the same time, right? Yes. And one of the things that I used to do, um, we, we haven't done this course in the uh, last year or two, uh, is that at the end of every class, I would have a, a, an instrument that we are going to talk about, break it down, explore mm. the science, explore the making, and then cap it with a small performance, a five minute performance, or okay. just something, you know, so uh, because we cannot forget that this is a very applied art. Right. This is, mm. and it's also an art that brings joy to the performer, the practitioner, yeah, and other listener, yeah. And it's instantaneous, right? Um, the mm. uh, in in visual art, um, the painting is a process, mm. and if you are a painter, you will enjoy the process. But if you're a layperson like me, 
I like hmm. to enjoy the finished product. Ah, after fin- after doing the entire yes. thing. Yes. Yeah. So in hmm. music, what is the finished product and what is the beginning? <laughs> the finished product is the journey. There is no yeah. separating. Uh, so it's a very present art. It is in the now. It operates in the present. Hmm. The the past is relevant. The future is not visible, but the present is where we are all the time. So in that sense, music. Maybe you know these are the finer aspects that distinguish mm. an art from another art. Uh, okay. But uh, you know any art has its uh, gratification. It it just feels mm-hmm. this is worth it. True. <laughs> Wonderful. I think people are like I mean uh, loving that and and then thanks for performing for us. Yeah. And before moving to the next question, next question is more of we'll going to work together. I think uh, you along with audience we're going to come up with certain. solutions that we can come up with uh so before that audience if there are any questions uh that uh, you have in mind that is relevant to today's topic you can uh, please type it out uh, we'll just discuss that soon and uh, raghavan i just saw this ted talk like uh, i don't know how many times but it's by sir ken robinson to school skill creativity uh-huh. and there is like wonderful story that he would share between a little girl and a teacher where i just would like to bring that again uh, for the people so the teacher would would ask what you're drawing and the uh, and the girl will reply i'm drawing drawing the picture of a god the teacher immediately will say but nobody has seen what god looks like and and the girl will say it will in a minute <laughs> so <laughs> so this was like very powerful in terms of uh, uh, what is it like i mean we were uh, conditioned to an extent in terms of if i if you ask me to draw a house now even though uh i don't see that house in our context i'll just put triangle and square and then complete a house because that was how i was trained or like conditioned in an environment in as a very young childhood but even now it was difficult to come out of it after going through college and interacting but we still are getting hold of it so do school skill creativity is a very big word i'm 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 uh, a school some schools are doing really great job and apart from syllabus but is there something that we could do together in terms of fixing i'm not saying fixing as such that's be like one solution not like one solution but to make it more progressive what our education system can do and what we can do as parents educators yeah to move one step forward yeah 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 uh you know uh what uh, what really is uh, happening here is that if only schools can involve um, children very closely in what they do you know and it's mm-hmm. not an easy ask i realize a lot of people are working on it including you and me right yeah. if only schools can involve because um, there is this very famous uh, saying i think it was benjamin franklin he said something like if you tell me something i will forget it right? yeah <laughs> um, if you teach me something i will remember it Mm. uh but if you involve me i will truly learn it right and yeah. so uh, i mean what is the third and final step learning mm. and and this act of learning is is uh, probably a proxy or a synonym for imbibing internalizing mm. right experiencing um, okay. feeling so we have a very uh, these are very soft terms right mm mm-hmm. uh, most of the emphasis is on the hard the numbers the getting the answers right okay uh, but the real learning involvement enjoyment uh, mm-hmm. appreciation aha the insight moment yeah right uh, <clears throat> these are the real fundamental game changers right mm-hmm. uh, and i think the million dollar question is how can schools uh, involve both the learner and the teacher because True. this is really um, like the suzuki method says um, learning is a triangle the mm. it's uh, it's like a tripod there are three legs to learning one leg is not right or yeah. it's not going to work the one is of course the the student the child mm the other leg is the teacher the person who's and the third yeah. one is a parent right so we have to ask ourselves you know uh, as 
for in my case, I'm a parent, right? Mm. Um, I'm also a teacher and I continue to be a student. So we are, yeah. <laughs> uh, we are doing three <laughs> things at the same time, but now we can, we have an opportunity to be honest because we are not simply mm. donning a single hat. Now mm. don these hats and see, you know, what is missing from the other, right? Uh, mm. y you know, uh, so if you if you are wearing the the parental hat, um, how much are you controlling? How much are you liberating your child? Mm -hmm. That's a balance, right? Extreme independence, while it sounds like a fantastic idea, is like imagination. Okay, imagination has no bounds. It's like dreaming. True. But um, where is the tangible outcome of imagination? It's in creativity. Yeah. It's only when you bound imagination with a certain, you know, set of parameters. In my case, I'm a musician. So mm -hmm. my bounds are physically this flute is a bound, right? It only has six holes. Uh, I cannot create a hole dynamically while yeah. I'm playing it. So I'm, <laughs> these are all my fingers, right? So my flute uh, while it's a fantastic metaphor for all that is creative, it is also a very visual uh, manifestation of what is limited. Mm. So I am now having to uh, bundle everything within six holes and one bamboo stick, one bamboo hollow stick. Yeah. Right? So that is an example of how imagination, which is in my head, which is the whole universe, gets mm. transformed by the process of these boundaries and these uh, constraints. And then when I played something, it sounded good to you because you recognize it. Mm. It follows certain rules. And these rules are actually very mathematical. There is a lot of math in music, right? And then there are all the social things. If I played this here in Tamil Nadu or um, somewhere where the song has been heard, it resonates very instantly. If not, mm -hmm. it may take some more time to reach. True. Right? So there is a social context. So again, creativity is not a standalone mm -hmm. vacuum thing. Right. Okay. So, uh, I mean, going back to, you know, how can schools do all this? You know, they only have so much time and they have time. limitations mm -hmm. of budget. They have, uh, I mean, poor teachers, how much can they do? Right. We have to be fair on all sides. Yeah. Yes. That's why I think <laughs> you have to teach. You have to learn. Learn. And you have to parent in a way, in a <laughs> sense, you, even okay, if you don't yeah. have children, you have Understood. to put yourself into the shoes. Mm -hmm. And the bottom line is, when you do all these three, you will find the empathy you need to transform systems. Until then, we are going to imitate uh, mm -hmm. a, a different culture, imitate a different time, uh, and okay. never, never get what is going on, what is really needing to be solved. Wonderful. I think it's it's that's the empathy to start with, uh, because right now, like a lot of uh, uh, online classes going on. And when we see the efforts of teachers and even like parent could recognize that what is happening at the back end. Yeah. And as you say, if you could uh, turn on the hats on, like understand other situation, I think we could come up with a we're not arrived with the solution. But I think this is the first step to just at least think about it, yeah. I guess. So thanks for bringing it out. So before moving to my question, I think some audience have also like asked some certain questions. Uh, so one of them, I think a parent asked, being multiple talented does not harm high skill in one field. Uh, I think she's asking yeah, between one and, and multiple fields. Yeah. So, I mean, it's a good question. Uh, very valid question. So what we have uh, is a situation where do we drill deep or do we uh, mm. go wide? So is it a one yeah. inch or a one mile, right? <laughs> <laughs> so should we, you know, this is a very uh, interesting paradigm. It, it is a business paradigm. It's a life paradigm. It's just an education mm -hmm. paradigm. How much of a spread can you do, right? Mm -hmm. uh, actually, the, the answer is how much does it take to solve the problem? Okay. The, the answer to that question is the answer to this question of how much uh, skill do you need? Okay, mm. so uh, what is the most skilled thing that you can think of, Harish? You know, rocket science, for example, you know, okay. popular science, yeah. uh, a popular imagination thinks of people who send uh, a Chandrayaan uh, mm. or, you know,
know, uh, or uh, Apollo, or those people to be at the very apex of engineering. Right? Mm. Uh, if you look at the teams that make up uh, even ISRO, right? Mm. They're not all aeronautical engineers. Uh, in fact, mm. they're not all engineers. There are medical uh. professors, uh, profess there are, so you can name it. You know, uh, you could say, oh, maybe there are no musicians. <laughs> we'll come to that later, okay? Uh, maybe there's no full-time musician. Let's put it that way. But what, okay. what uh, invariably happens is when we build a classic, uh, a, a, a world-class team, the first mm -hmm. thing that uh, the person who builds the team will uh, look for is diversity. Mm -hmm. Look for or she will look for how do I, how can I fill this is a very difficult problem. How can I mm. fill all the cracks? Can I put all engineers into this? Can I put all electrical engineers, all electrical engineers from IIT, all electrical engineers from Mandakini Hostel and IIT Madras? <laughs> it will not solve the problem because it is, this is not grades, right? Real life mm. success is not measured in getting a A or a, or a B or something or passing. Mm. You have to either solve the problem or you fail at solving the problem. Right. So where, sure. where will you get your, uh, the, the big picture from by having mm. many people. Now we are talking about people as if they have single talent, say one by mm. one guy who's good at physics, one guy who's good at this, that mm. now, what about that one person who's good at math? Okay. Uh, where will he get his ideas from? Let's say this guy, um, mm. uh, this person, male or female, has spent all their life uh, understanding Fermat's theorem. Okay. And the Fermat's last uh, conjecture was proved not many years ago. The person mm. who actually uh, solved it uh, did not even have a background in that specific area. He had he had multiple other things that he could correlate. Mm, okay? mm, mm. Some of the ideas came from outside of even the domain of mathematics. Okay. Uh, another classical e example of a person with multiple ch um, talent that can that could solve problems or Isaac Einstein, the world's hmm. greatest physicist. Um, he solved problems by just sitting uh, in deep in thought and uh, imagining it and and then yeah. sometimes taking a break and playing his violin. This <laughs> so does that mean that if you if you take frequent breaks and play the violin, you will discover the theory of relativity. No, no. But, <laughs> but what it would, what it probably means is you will, you will have a better shot at arriving at other angles to solve the problems that you have, you are dealing with. I mean, that much is mm -hmm. so in the context of high skill in one field, which is the okay. question, um, creativity. You know, I remember reading somewhere uh, recently, very recently, mm. somebody, some professor at the University of uh, or Penn State, um, she has said that creativity is a vital part of engineering and you can't have an engineer without someone who's creative. An engineer is not an engineer unless he or she is creative, is what creative. the person is saying. Um, I, I think her name was Scarlett Miller. And okay. She's a professor of engineering design in Penn State. You know, uh, this this uh, need not uh, this, this need mm -hmm. not surprise us, right? Yeah. Uh, anybody who has solved problems will realize that the solution comes from a very quiet spot in our mind, a very quiet mm -hmm. spot. It comes by thinking slow, and this is not mm -hmm. an answer to just an arithmetic problem. It is True. an answer to something deeper. So, uh, in a way, you know, uh, yeah, you should invest more time in what you like the most or what you're most talented in. No doubt mm -hmm. about it, because that way you are both uh, fulfilling your own uh, yeah. personal <laughs> need and fulfilling a need in society. There is always a need in society for your skill set. But on the other hand, if you're going to, uh, you know, if you're going to be forced to do something exclusively day in and day out, mm. that's going to be very harmful. Okay. So this is especially relevant for children. You know, adults do what you want. 
right? At Correct. the end of the day, you have the freedom to hang yourself with. But when it comes to children, how can we do this? How can we mm -hmm. confine them to one thing? How can we tell them that we'll crack the whip? You have to, you know, metaphorically, you have okay. to solve this. You have to do this. It's not fair. And it is mm -hmm. not useful to society. I mean, it is, it is not the India that we want in the future. The India that we need and we want in the future is one that can solve very, very uh, high level problems uh, mm -hmm. in, in extremely creative ways. So the target of all education should be to become more creative. And that's why I think, you know, again, to reinforce, yeah. this is the most important super uh, power that you need. Great, Raghavan. And with that note, I think it, this question also will be like more valid where a parent had asked is creativity, arts or science? Can someone learn to become creative? Yeah. Um, oh, absolutely. 100%. Right. Uh, anybody can learn to be creative. Okay. So here is yeah. when I'm, I want to break creativity down into a few more tangible things that we can mm. actually do. You know, at the end of the day, you when you watch a webinar, you want to walk away with the ability to do something, right? Uh, mm -hmm. And you can do four things, exactly four things that will make you a more creative person. One, you can make, okay? Mm. You can make paper planes to begin with. And I kid you not, making a paper plane is a very, very creative process. Making the most basic paper plane is creative when you decide that it is going to break the world record. Okay, the mm -hmm. amount of uh, <laughs> amount of thought that it takes for you to simply have a paper plane that flies over uh, 10 feet is tremendous. Mm -hmm. Try doing it. Try spending 20 minutes making a paper, paper plane that goes across your home or across your yard, right? So mm -hmm. that is a simple example, but making uh, is a lot more than it. It really opens up parts of the brain that you did not think existed. Okay. okay. Yes. So my first advocacy for if you want to become creative is start making something. Making it. Mm -hmm. um, the second thing uh, is hacking. So making hacking, right? You could you could say you know maybe they are mm -hmm. one in one that depends on other, but all of creativity is intertwined and joined. So I'm just trying to separate it out for our own sanity and what is hacking, okay. right? <clears throat> um, hacking is simply finding a different way to solve a problem. Uh, in mm -hmm. Hindi, we call it Jugad. Jugad, right? yeah. Jugad is nothing but hacking. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. when, you, when you think you are not able to get uh, enough... Uh, I don't know, speed in a fan. Uh, or mm. if you think your bicycle is, uh, you're not able to pedal fast enough. Uh, okay. These are these are all small engineering problems that if you put our minds to it, we'll be able to jugard, right? Mm -hmm. So um, we are Indians, jugard is an Indian word. So hacking is basically something that we, we have in us. Okay. We, we have all done it at some point, but how do we do it consciously? Right. Mm -hmm. uh, the world of software is full of hacks and the hacking is not a bad word in software. I, I was okay. a developer for most of my career and uh, the hackers were the highest paid in any organization. Mm -hmm. Because mm -hmm. they were the ones who could very quickly zoom into solutions because they will cut through the garbage. They will go straight into the parts of the system which really matter, which you need tinkering. Okay. Wonderful. So the second thing that is hacking. Um, the third is teach somebody something. It doesn't matter mm. what it is. Teach your child how to fry an egg and see how far it takes him or her in life. You know, okay. teach, uh, teach your peer, your spouse, your senior. You will have some skill, something that you're mm. good at. Okay. Okay. Uh, so teaching is the third thing. And the fourth thing is ironical. It is copying. Is it? Yes. <laughs> Copying. Uh, okay. So here is a story that I was uh, reminded of, right? Um, when I got into the webinar, I was thinking of what should I say the fourth thing is. Should I say something uh, 
uh, very uh, respectable or should I just call it copying or thieving even? Be a thief. Okay. In fact, that's what I would say. Um, there mm-hmm. was, uh, this is a joke. There was this guy who was a very famous like bank robber. Okay. He okay. Was, he was known, uh, this is set in Europe 100 years ago, you know. Uh, he was famous, uh, but you know, he was out and everybody knew him. So wherever he uh, went, there will be police following him. Okay. Uh, and he had done one big bank robbery before, so he is a notorious, right? So this man starts going to a, a museum. Mm. Uh, and so the police, is, they are all very worried and cautious. He goes mm. one day, he goes another day, he goes to the th- third day. So after five days of having gone to a museum, uh, he will go stare at an artifact, spend some time mm. thinking or uh, looking at it and go back. And then uh, the police will be sure, oh, he's stealing that artifact. It is some advanced machine. Uh, okay. And then uh, the fifth day, uh, he would stop. He said, that's it, I'm done. So this, uh, he didn't yeah. show up on the sixth day. Mm. Uh, so the police, uh, uh, chief of police or somebody goes and asks him, so what are you going to steal? When are you going to steal? Like, I'm not <laughs> able to take this person. He said, I have already stolen. I've stolen the idea behind that particular exhibit. So that okay. idea is now mine, right? So what he's claiming is that he has understood how that, whatever he is looking at, that machinery or whatever, it he understands how it works now. So works. he will be able mm. to build it now. Um, that is copying, right? But it is not as simple as, uh, you know, it's not as simple as cut pasting somebody's code and claiming it on your code. That's called plagiarism. Mm-hmm. There's a difference between copying what is good and plagiarizing uh, what is already there. So okay. treat this with a pinch of salt, but copy, copy good practices, copy good rules, okay. copy good uh, living, good design. Mm-hmm. See what happens. So great. That's make, hack, teach, and copy. copy. <laughs> so we got a got a framework now during our conversation. I hope like it applies to it all. I mean, it, it really like when going to deep, we are doing some part of it, but if you could structure it consciously of doing certain things in our daily life, I think a lot of them asked is can creativity improve? The same question repeated from others as well. Sure. I think this would give them a a, a solution to move forward. Yes. And uh, uh, quickly, I think we'll move. We almost there, like, I mean, uh, uh, five 53. So to end our time is like seven, 10 minutes odd. So, uh, I would like to take some of the questions, but let me take some time, but I would interested to explore that, uh, the duality that you were speaking, uh, and you were communicating, uh, that day, uh, uh making versus breaking mm-hmm. and, uh, and all those stuff. Mm-hmm. So, because we always seen one side of the coin and, and we always gone behind that mm. but there was always the other side as you said mm. and how can you like <laughs> break that for our audience yeah, yeah. Um, it is very much in the context of these four skills that i uh, talked to you about be a maker mm. be a hacker be a teacher be a thief right uh, when you think about that a maker is never just a maker a maker starts off making by making a lot of mistakes right mm. and so he's a breaker or you know, a, a teacher, she is a learner, right? So for every one of these skills or this mm-hmm. creative superpowers, there is the other side which does not seem very glorious, right? Uh, mm-hmm. I could have said instead of thief, I could have said uh, adapter, all right? Uh, uh, <laughs> but I wanted to proceed with saying copy. Um, instead of adapt, mm-hmm. because I want to reinforce the point that this is the other side, okay? Mm-hmm. There is no point in denying the other side, right? As the True. Jedi say, you know, uh, you need balance of the dark force and the light force, right? So yeah. the dark force, if you can even call it, it is actually not even a dark force. It is part and parcel of making, is to mm-hmm. take things apart, disassemble, right? And music is very, very much so. The process of learning music is all about undoing and doing, undoing and doing, okay? Uh, when you want to sing in in sur or pitch, like mm. shruti, they say, that aspect itself is very much like a face lock loop. The brain is l- 
locking yeah. onto a signal and mm. it is keeping it constant it doesn't happen uh, for free you are expending energy right so you're constantly mm. adjusting for feedback you are creating yeah. a pll you are creating a negative feedback system you know all these come mm. back to engineering so there is no way that you can approach making without breaking there is no way you can approach construction without a creative destruction mm. right? similarly there is no way you can be a good teacher without the humility to learn learn right um, so these are all uh, dualities you know <laughs> so i had forgotten that but uh, I, i think they are they are you know what i why, why i like to talk about it is there is absolutely no shame uh, in mm-hmm. not being a good flute player for example right okay so because there is hari prasad chaurasia he is going to play a lot better than me. but mm. it doesn't bother me okay uh, <laughs> although my goal is to be as good a flute player as any or as good a saxophone mm. player as any as good a vocalist as any it is not that goal that really drives me it is the process of mm. you know of aspiring to sing like balamurli krishna to play like hari prasad chaurasia to play like john coltrane right mm. that process is what that that uh, they are the ideals uh, the pole stars mm. and practitioners are constantly making and breaking hacking copying adapting <laughs> teaching learning and we are yeah. all slowly getting to a goal you know uh, however illusory it may be this is truly gratifying to the soul and beneficial to society wonderful wonderful uh, i think the same framework to an extension someone also asked like how we can improve our multiple talents can we apply the same framework for example if uh, there are a couple of things here one if i am having multiple talents in different fields that will also help me to make some new connections mm. and that's what creativity is but to to improve multiple talents should i apply the same framework or like how that works right i mean uh, uh, those multiple talents right what are they right you may think uh, your mm. your talent lies in certain uh, areas mm. uh, it may be because you you sincerely believe it or you think it is a way to earn a living i mean we have to first of all be very clear on what is this talent we are talking about right mm-hmm. uh, once we are able to even that is a creative process harish yeah. even the okay. <laughs> uh, process of identifying what your talent is i think a lot of us are walking amongst us who have not gotten there yet i mean mm-hmm. not children but adults i'm saying why because they have been burdened with the expectation of say making a living or making a buck or mm-hmm. creating a massive empire or whatever it mm-hmm. is these are burdens you know instead of that if the goal has been defined differently as what is it that gets you going and what makes mm-hmm. you think and what makes you happy uh, these may be the better ways to first approach the question of what is my talent and then we'll talk about multiple talents but once you Not identify it. a talent be it painting or cooking or um, solving riddles mm-hmm. or uh, you know mountain climbing then you can start taking steps along this framework of creativity okay how do you make steps how do you uh, hack uh, the process you know how okay. do you will yourself to do it how can you strengthen that uh, muscle mm-hmm. the brain mm-hmm. or the body or whatever it is Okay. At that point, it's those four things over and over again. Okay, great. I'll just pick this uh, last question, and then we'll move on to the to the final segment. We're always close to the end time. So, parents, there is a surprise waiting. Maybe I'm 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 not even convey to Raghavan. Maybe I could ask it again. <laughs> But uh, this, oh, the parent has said, if we are good at something or passionate about something, then we can be creative. But if I'm not good at it, but want or needs to be creative then how can we do it maybe there is a step by step process to it or like i mean it's a fair question right um um i want to be as good a pole vault uh, champion as sergey bubka right mm. but i have never done any track or field and i am in my 40s it's not reasonable right <laughs> yeah it's not reasonable i mean set reasonable goals uh, within reason i mean 
I, I, I feel another reason why I love music is that I cannot think of any, almost anything that stops you from exploring the world of music. Mm -hmm. It has such a low bar of entry, threshold of entry. Of course, to be an expert, it's a very yeah. high bar to be an mm. expert. But to be a beginner, uh, to be a journey journeyman, to be middling at it, it's yeah. a very low bar. You know, uh, it is as simple as simply deciding one day to sing uh, or deciding mm -hmm. one day to buy a flute, which costs like 100 rupees. Or, yeah. I mean, these are all very small investments of time and money we are talking about in the beginning. Right? Mm -hmm. So if it is something like that, that you think you, you have an inkling that it is within your grasp, try it, right? You actually plunge yeah. into it, plunge into it, you know, one foot at a time. And if you are truly uh, and really passionate about it, you will soon be underwater, which is a good state to be. <laughs> soon be thinking about it constantly, mm -hmm. remembering it, getting ideas in the shower while you are asleep, <laughs> in the yeah. middle of something. And that will become such a great way to motivate you to wake up the next day and do more. Right? Wonderful. Sure. Wonderful, uh, Raghavan. That was a uh, great conversation. I mean, like uh, we had a lot of insights from you. I think we need to like look at this one more time and break it into small uh, modules, which I could share with the audience. That would be great because there are some very key insights that you uh, that you gave us during the conversation. And uh, uh, I just would love to end again on a musical note because a lot of question people had asked how many instruments could you play? <laughs> The lot of questions people had asked since it was not into the context, I pushed it at the very last. So, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, look, uh, you know, uh, playing an instrument is like learning a language. You know, some people are gifted mm -hmm. at being polyglots that they can learn a language very fast because they mm -hmm. maybe they have been like that since they were children. Uh, okay. In my sense, in my experience, and in the way I look at it. I can learn an instrument quickly. But mm -hmm. does that make me a, a, a concert player in that instrument? No, it doesn't, <laughs> right? Okay. Uh, I may be able to just play a tune in it and stop there. Like if I can play mm -hmm. Malmudi days, I may say, okay, I can, I'm a beginner at that, right? Okay. So uh, to be, uh, you know, I want to be very fair on answer answering this i'm no expert <laughs> in all the instruments that i play but i can okay. play maybe 10 or 12 of them you know that number varies it depends on the uh, mm -hmm. know, if you take the family of saxophones there yeah. are four different saxophones that i play but they are just built differently they have different sizes okay you know, different ways of blowing in but the principles mm. are same in fact universally uh, a musician who loves sound right uh, and who has a reasonable understanding of physics or mm. making, uh, actually building. Okay. The instrument is there to help that musician, not to make it more challenging, but to actually lower the bar for okay. uh, producing great music. The, mus the A good music, um, musical instrument is actually drawing it you to it. It's... It's not the other way around. You don't have to go for mm. it. It will draw you. Then you know that it's a beautiful instrument. A flute, for example, is it's it has the allure. It has the simplicity. You hold it as if you are mm -hmm. holding a glove. It fits so easily. Yeah. So uh, <laughs> you know it is at at once both challenging and obvious, intuitive, right? So at this level of intuition, uh, I could pick up any instrument and reasonably play it. But will I be mm -hmm. playing at uh, uh, the Royal Symphony Orchestra? No. <laughs> Agreed. <laughs> I know that it's too much to expect for. <laughs> no, but, so, but you know, you know somebody who can speak eight languages. You are in India. Yeah. Right? So Correct. how do they do it? It's the same way. Wonderful. I think, yeah, great. <laughs> so Raghavan, like, I mean, wonderful. I think thanks for the audience as well for joining us today on, uh, because we understood the the more foundation of creativity because it's it's different when we read some articles and then comment on it and then and then just read the definition and go but from your personal experiences we got to understand different flavors of uh, uh, creativity from your personal experiences and 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 thanks a lot for joining us and uh, and uh, we would like to ask audience with your permission if it is possible for another 
ending on another musical note if that is possible then i can ask an audience if <laughs> sure uh... so for audience if you, if you want another i mean we would like to end on a musical note so you just need to like uh comment <laughs> if you're looking forward to it then uh Okay. Sure, yeah. Let me know if uh, there is interest. Definitely I think like people started replying to it. So <laughs> it's already there. Okay. Uh what should we play? Yeah. So I'll just wait for like last couple of minutes where we end on a musical note and you have a uh sign up form which will also be posted in our WhatsApp group which for every other webinar every week we'll do a a webinar on different skill or a superpower so if you want to look for updates you can sign up to this uh, form it will also be posted in the whatsapp group as well as in the chat so raghavan is ready i'm just going to move out yeah in <laughs> <laughs> audience also post your feedback yeah thank you Thanks a lot. <laughs> Thanks a lot, Raku. Yeah, another one from Astro. Wonderful. I think all musical fans. I mean, like, I would also like take an opportunity to see that. I mean, uh, I mean, every other thing is connected. I mean, we should not see like a different subjects because that's what we see in schools. But in life, everything is connected. So I request all the parents uh, through Raghavan. Uh, I mean, we should respect and appreciate every other field out there, every other art form, and uh, and any final words. from your argument for the parents and and educators out there oh yeah uh, i think you know i am a fellow parent a fellow educator uh, <laughs> we are all uh, trying to figure it out as we go in many ways uh, this whole endeavor of uh, providing a better forum for children to learn uh, yeah. is itself a very creative endeavor right mm -hmm. so uh, by by just being a stakeholder in this whether we are a child or a teacher or a parent or uh, or simply an onlooker with with the intent to improve 
things. Hmm. They are already engaged in probably the most creative and the most relevant and the most socially useful uh, uh, endeavor, which is investing in the future of the world, not merely our nation, future of the environment, future of the world. Uh, so I, I think, you know, one key area of uh, where creativity is abounding is in this area of educating each other, understanding the nuances mm -hmm. uh, and helping the next generation. So, you know, I, I would love for all of you, you know, to feel that you are stakeholders. You know, the, it starts with that ownership. It starts with the conviction. Yeah. And uh, so, you know, if you are sitting on the fence and wondering, uh, education is not a job for only the schools, only the teachers, only the students, only the children. It's for all of mm -hmm. us. So please continue doing what you're doing and being a part of these uh, forums. Wonderful, wonderful. And thank you. Thank you, Raghavan, for being part of this great conversation. I truly enjoyed it as a musical fan, as an educator, I could relate to what you are saying. And then I loved the whole thing. And by seeing the comments, I think even parent and educators could also relate it. We are getting some positive messages. So thank you for the time. And thank you for playing for us. And then thanks for all. And thanks for all your thoughts. Good luck, Harish. Sure. And thank you for sure. doing this. Uh, the uh, I think the community owes it to you to continue this. Sure. Yeah. Looking forward. Thank you. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Bye. Take care. Yeah. Bye. Bye. Yeah. Bye. So thank you all. Thanks for the wonderful uh, response and uh, and looking forward to your thoughts, feedback. You can send uh, to WhatsApp messages or type in the chat. And this was keeps us going. So stay tuned. And next week again at 5 p.m. We are working on a new skill, new superpower with a new expert. Stay tuned for more updates and follow our social media handles for uh, where we put regular updates as well. So thanks a lot. Thanks for parents, educators and kids who have joined this session. Looking forward. Take care. Have a great day. Bye.